Hey guys, welcome back. So uh, today we're going to be talking about a couple of the newly spoiled cards, uh, cards from day two and day three of spoiler season for Uprising. So we uh, we're closing in on the end of spoiler season, unfortunately, but uh, I've really liked a lot of the stuff we've seen so far. Uh, so this is not going to be a breakdown of all the cards from day two and three, but it's going to be, you know, the ones that I think are the most interesting, or at least I have the most to say about. So I'm not touching on any of the uh, any more of the dragons, the dragon allies. Uh, we're probably going to do a whole video breaking down the the different dragons, because uh, you know each dragon, you know, or that each region has their own specific dragon. We're going to kind of break down some of the the like potentially the lore and stuff behind that maybe as well. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to make a really cool video on the dragons though, for sure. But the first card we're going to talk about is the, the new weapon for, for Draconic Ninja. So this is the token weapon. Uh, and in my previous videos, I've stated that ever since Monarch, each corset has had uh, a token weapon and then a majestic weapon for each hero. Um, and I fully believe that that trend is going to continue here. So, yeah, <laughs> to take everything I say about this weapon with a grain of salt because it's just a token one. But... Uh, this is a two-handed weapon, which, I don't know. I, I don't know how much, of course, I haven't played the class, and I don't know all the cards. There could be some more support for this, but this card seems weird for Fi, right? Also, I'm calling them Fi. I've seen a lot of people say Fey, but Fi, I think, is the technical pronunciation, because Fi is how it's pronounced, the way it's spelled, I think, personally. And also Fi, like fire. I don't know. I think that's intentional, but... Anyways, it's a three attack, but it's two-handed, and you have to pay two resources to attack. Now, it does have this go-again trigger stapled on. Um, so, you know, there is a lot of... The go-again is, is almost as conditional as the Kadachis. It's, it's very easy to pull off, right? But you have to pay two to attack, which I don't know how much Fi is going to want to do, since uh, Fi is going to be another very red-centric deck. But... Yeah, I don't know. It's not terrible. Uh, so it says if you control two or more Draconic Chain Links, it has to go again. This is a, um, a Draconic Chain Link in of itself. So you technically really only have to have one previous Draconic Chain Link for this to gain go again. That's something to consider. I don't know. We'll move on because there's, like I said, this card is, is interesting, but I don't think it's amazing. I think it's cool, but not amazing, right? So, one card that I do think is amazing, or at least I personally think is going to be really good, I really like the card at the very least, uh, is Take the Tempo. I think this has probably got a, a more of a slot in like traditional ninja with the Kadachis, but Take the Tempo I think is, is still really good uh, for, for basically all the ninjas, honestly, except for maybe Benji. But Take the Tempo says... When it, it's a, it blocks for three, it's a five for one, and it pitches for red. And it says when it hits, if you've hit with three or more times this chain link, or this combat chain, banish the top card of your deck, and if it's an attack action card, you may play it until the end of your next turn. So that's not the current turn that you're on. That's uh, you, So you have until the end of this turn, and then all the way through the end of your opponent's turn. Or, sorry, in the end of your next turn. So... Uh, I mean, you do have to know that you can't block with it and you can't pitch with it. So there are, you know, <laughs> some kind of, I don't know, issues there. I think that's balanced. I think that's very balanced. Um, so it's it's very conditional for getting that cards, but it doesn't feel overly oppressive. You don't just, you know, get an, a, effectively an extra intellect. You, you do have to use it to attack. But another cool thing that I don't think anybody else has pointed out yet that I uh, I talked a little bit about in my my previous video on kind of underrated cards going into to the Uprising meta. This card, the card that you're getting, is going into your Banish Zone. And when you play it, you can activate uh, Talisman of Cremation. <laughs> so uh, Talisman of Cremation was, was a card that I said would be really good against Fi, right? Because Fi has a lot of graveyard interaction with the... Uh, the Phoenix tokens, Phoenix Flames. So, Talisman of Cremation, you hit with this, you add insult to injury because you play the card for Banish Zone and then you burn all of their Phoenix Flames out of their graveyard for every opponent. So, in multiplayer, in uh, Ultimate Pit Fight, if you're against three fives, ah, that's nuts, right? I think this is really cool. I think there's a lot of really cool, like, interactions that nobody has kind of considered yet. But, uh, I mean, obviously this is not amazing, but any deck that has Graveyard Recursion, I also think this is going to be important when Necromancer comes out, 
which I fully believe will be either uh, in the next corset or at least within the next year. I think that's going to be the, the next kind of class that's released. So, <laughs> yeah, Talisman of Cremation, I think, is going to be... And once again, it's $9 for the cold foil. $9. I think I'm going to pick a couple of these up because I fully believe that graveyard interaction is going to be more prominent and uh, this card will be better. <laughs> so, I don't know. Give, let me know your thoughts on this card below, uh, especially in regards to Take the Tempo. Let me know if I'm reading this completely wrong. Uh, but I think that's a really potent strategy there, right? So Tome of Firebrand is another Draconic uh, card. This one is just just Draconic, so you can use it in Fi or uh, Dromai. But it is an instant. It's a book. I love the books. <laughs> All the tomes. I really wish they would do like a librarian or a bookkeeper class. I think that would be really cool. Just so I can cram all my books into one uh, one deck. But yeah, Tome of Firebrand is really neat. So uh, it says you can only play it if you have four or more Draconic Chain Links. And it's an instant. So you don't have to worry about getting an action point or giving it go again to continue your assault. Uh, but you draw two cards and it only costs one. So, you know, you can pay off of a tunic and then just draw two cards. Or if you have an extra resource, like say you did have a, red, a, a yellow or a blue in your deck and you, you weren't using all the resources on Fire Dromite, you can draw two more cards and continue your assault. So uh, I think card draw is becoming a lot more uh, rampant in the game as well. I think that uh, Fi really capitalizes on card draw or at least card advantage and draw my you know you're gonna have lots of of little tiny dragons so you're probably gonna have four chain links before you even attack with a card right but anyways this card i think is interesting uh i think it's possibly abusable uh to the point of you know this i don't know this seems like it might be a problem card but we'll see singe singe is really cool um I'm so glad we're getting more of the wizard stuff spoiled. I wasn't expecting to see much more stuff for Icelander uh, after that first initial batch, but this is good uh, kind of counterplay to Dromai for for Icelander, especially in draft. Um, but it says, deal one arcane damage to target hero and up to three target allies they control. It does block for three as well. It, it does cost one and only pitches for red. I think this will probably be part of a cycle and it'll be red, yellow, blue, as far as how many allies you can target. That's probably my guess. But I think this is solid. I think this is really good. Of course, it's only good against currently at least. Once again, I think Necromancer will probably use allies. So I think a lot of the cards in the set are kind of setting up the idea of Necromancer. But I think that I imagine they probably, honestly, if I had to take a guess, they were going to have Necromancer in this set. And then they ended up not doing it. But they used some of the mechanics they originally had planned for Necromancer. And they scrapped it. Like Graveyard Recursion and Allies. But anyways, this card says that you can target up to three different allies uh, with Arcane Damage. So you can do their Aether Ash Wings or whatever they're called. Or, you know, there's a couple dragons that have like one or two health that you can target the Arcane Damage at them and blow them up. I don't think the Arcane Barrier works against this uh, when it's targeting your allies because I'm pretty sure Arcane Barrier says uh, whenever your hero would be... When, I think it's like whenever you would be dealt damage... So, I'll have to double check on that, but that's to my understanding, that's that's what it means. So, uh, you know, you can buff it up as well with, with buff spells. Um, it is an action, so you do have to have an action point for it, which is a little underwhelming, because this, you know, one damage is... It's not great for your turn, right? But, I don't know, it's it's cool. I think it's conditional, but it's really cool. So, we did get another uh, another wizard weapon. Uh, I've said this previously, but I, I believe that the majestic weapon we're going to get for Wizard in the set is just going to be a Kraken's Aether Vein reprint, because that is Icelander's uh, signature weapon. So I imagine we'll probably see this in this set. Uh, I would love to see something different, but I think they kind of have to. If they're reprinting Icelander, they're probably going to have to reprint this, but we'll see. But that being said, the, the token weapon, the Waning Moon, is actually pretty cool. Uh, I, the first time I read it, I was like, this is not great. But the more I think about it, this is just gravy, right? So it's got uh, once per instant, you pay two. It is two-handed. It's another staff. Uh, and it says deal two arcane damage to target hero. If it's not your turn, instead deal three arcane damage to them. And you can only pl activate this ability if you've played a non-attack action card this turn. 
So as a wizard, you're going to hit that criteria basically every every time on your opponent's turn because Icelanders can be playing stuff out of Arsenal and Kano is just going to be whacking them with stuff off the top of their deck. So, I don't know. I think you're probably going to... I don't know. I just don't know how this fits into a strategy, right? It's just... It's just vanilla damage. I mean, I guess this is also a use for if you have any cards you, you want to get rid of because, you know, sometimes as uh, Kano, you'll pitch to your Aether Vein just to cycle cards. So this is also a good use for, for card cycling because um, you get the, the two damage on your turn. So I, I don't know. I think this is cool. It's not amazing, but it's it's definitely not the worst wizard weapon. <laughs> but but yeah, uh, the next card we're going to talk about is actually really cool. It's the, the second legendary we've seen so far. So uh, we'll talk about the other legendary in a sec. But, uh, but this is the, the wizard legendary from the set. I was very much hoping it was going to be a wizard hat, <laughs> like a cool wizard hat for the legendary, but I don't know. Wizard robes is really cool too. I, I, I think that, you know, robes of Rapture were not great as a, as a token weapon. They kind of needed like a mid ground between, uh, uh, you know, something like robes of Rapture and, and tunic, but you know, getting in a, a legendary chess piece is, is also fine. Um, this is very conditional. I see, this is the thing. You're still going to run Tunic most of the time, right? Because this only works against characters with arcane damage. So, probably only... I mean, it's really good against Runeblade. Don't get me wrong. This is amazing against Runeblade. But, Wizard... Uh, against Wizard and... I mean, I guess you can run it against uh, Illusionist now. Because they have several different... Both Illusionists now have instances of arcane damage. With the dragon that deals arcane damage. And then... Uh, uh, what is the one? The fire... The new fire card that that makes your first dragon attack get, deal one arcane damage, and then you also have something else. I don't know. Anyways, so you know there is instances of arcane damage, but the fact that this is unusable without triggering the arcane barrier is a little bit of a letdown. So it's really, I mean, I wish you could have maybe been able to pay two to put an energy counter on it as well or something. I think that would have been cool. So it's not completely useless when you're not dealing with arcane damage. But that being said, this is amazing if you ever deal with arcane damage because it's it's kind of like uh it's kind of like investing your resources, right? You can pay into the the the, the robes and then you'll get them back plus potentially more later. Uh, I really think this was kind of meant to combo with Kraken's Aether Vein, um, considering I think Kraken's Aether Vein is the only staff that costs three right now. But but. Regardless, this also works very well with Waning Moon. You, you basically get Waning Moon's uh, ability for free, so uh, you can you can staple this uh, Waning Moon on the end of your 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 kind of combo on your opponent's turn just to push, that, push them over the top uh, for free, and maybe they'll forget about it sometimes. But oh, you can also store up to four energy. I do I do really like the fact that you can store up to four energy counters, um, so you, you can technically store two activations of it uh, at a time. But, uh, and it's also not a once per turn instant. <laughs> I don't think that, I don't think that you'll be able to, to use your staffs, any of your staffs more than once, but you never know. Maybe the Majestic will be a different staff and it'll have not once per turn instant. It'll just be instant pay however many resources do something. You never know. I think that would be cool to see, but also potentially busted. <laughs> also, uh, if your your weapon costs like six for instance you could pay you could remove all four counters and it would cost zero that i don't know i think there's there this this opens up some some kind of an idea space for 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 cool new stuff <laughs> so transmogrify is such a meme card right I'm, I'm i'm a timmy at heart so i love big flashy things that, that aren't super good but they're like when you pull it off your opponent's like what the heck so transmogrify really spoke to me <laughs> when i first read it so, uh, it's a, a red illusionist action that you, it costs one, and uh, it says the next attack action card you play this turn is illusionist, has eight base power, and gains phantasm. So, uh, yeah, and it keeps all of its other card types. So, I didn't, I looked through some of the, the, like, draconic attacks and stuff like that, and I didn't really see anything that interested me all that much, because this is an action, so it would break the combat chain. So, a lot, and a lot of the draconic stuff interacts with combat chain, so I don't know how much drum I would use this, but I think there is a really meme -y 
kind of like strategy where you use this with something like the the first card that jumped out to me was overload right so you can for one resource uh, one one resource you can play this followed up with overload for zero so overload becomes <laughs> an eight attack with dominate and if it hits it gains go again and then hit him with the fractal replication after that for another one you know <laughs> Uh, of course, you know, that means you have to have Overload in your deck, and who wants that? But I think there's some cool stuff that you can do with this card. I'm very excited to see what people come up with. I mean, you can even do Command and Conquer with this, right? Just to give it a couple extra attacks, and then you can hit him with the Fractal Replication to, to copy Command and Conquer, one of the best attacks in the game. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on this card. Uh, <laughs> is there some attack that I'm missing that's better than, uh, better than Overload? I mean, I guess... Let's see what else is zero cost. Snatch is pretty good. Um, drawing a card triggers is pretty good. But I think the Dominate is really... I think Dominate is going to be really good since it buffs it by so much. And then the Go Again trigger is it's nice. It's just gravy. So the next kind of cards we're going to talk about are the Quell Equipment. <laughs> I don't know how to feel about these cards, right? Let me know what you guys think about these cards down below. But I... I don't know when you would run this, right? Um, like, because this is... Arcane Barrier, you know, most of the time when you're using Arcane Barrier, you're using it, like, once or twice per turn over the whole game. Uh, whereas Quell, you have to use all of the Quell, you know, the, you have to use the Quell all at once, right? So this blows up at the end of your, your turn. It's the beginning of your end phase. So... I mean, it does work against physical damage as well. So it's probably really good for this draft environment because there's going to be so many different instances of Aether Ash Wings flying at you and the, like, the Phoenix Flames coming in for one, like all these tiny instances of one damage. So I think Quell is really cool for this environment, for this specific set. But aside from that, I don't really know how much we're going to use Quell, right? Um, I think... Some of the equipment that just has Quell in addition to their other effects, I think that's probably pretty good. But let me know, do, do you think Quell is going to replace like Ironhide in Guardian, or or would you ever replace Arcane Barrier with Quell? I don't know. I don't think so, but who knows? We'll see. We'll see how the meta shakes out, right? And then the last kind of card that I really wanted to, to talk about is Crown of Providence. This card is cool. So this is uh, what everybody's been talking about since yesterday at like 7 or whatever when when this card was spoiled. Uh, everybody's been talking about this being the skull cap killer and I kind of agree. I'm not I'm not sure. I think this card definitely will will put a dent in skull cap's usage, but I mean you still get one additional block with the skull cap. Does that outweigh the card cycling effect? Maybe. I don't know. I haven't I haven't really decided how I feel about this card. I, well, I, well, let me rephrase that. I really like the card, but I don't know how much I like it more than Skullcap. I think Skullcap still is conditionally better, but this card is super cool. This is, is really good. I think if you don't have a Skullcap and you open one of these, absolutely run this in every deck that you don't have a headpiece for. Um, it's it's also got, got the like Crown of Seeds kind of ability, so <laughs> I don't know that you would ever run this above Crown of Seeds, but also this only prevents physical damage because you have to actually block with it but um yeah i don't know i think this is really solid uh it does have blade break so you only get the two block uh, as we discussed but uh one thing to note when you block with this card you that triggered ability of when you defend with crown of providence that goes on the stack immediately so this card doesn't have to be destroyed this doesn't have to resolve before you draw the card so it's very similar to like sink below for instance where you can cycle a card, and then if you get a defense reaction, you can use it on this chain link, if that makes sense. So, if you're really digging for a defense reaction, and you and you block with this, and you draw that defense reaction, you can throw it on this chain link. So, I think Crown of Providence is very cool design-wise. The art is gorgeous. I really hope there's a Marvel rarity of this, like full art treatment for it. Oh my god, that's going to be great. But, yeah, I don't know. This, this is a really cool card. And finally, I'm going to leave you with this. So this is going to be kind of like a little a little bit of a quiz kind of thing. So Double Strike says when do it's a one attack for zero, has go again, blocks for two, ninja attack action. And it says when this chain link resolves, you banish it. 
You may play at this combat chain. If you do, it loses this ability. My question... I also... You know what I'm going to talk about. Talisman and Cremation, right? So when you play this, you can pop Talisman and Cremation. I think this card's going to be good. Um, but anyways, uh, when you banish this card as the chain link resolves, does that chain link still exist? For reference to things like... Uh, what is that? For, for instance, for Tome of Firebrand, does that chain link still count towards Tome of Firebrand? Or does it not? At what point does the uh, does the chain link go away if there's no card representing it or whatever? Um, let me know what you guys think down below. That's kind of, like I said, kind of just a question to ask for you guys. Uh, <laughs> see see how much about, about the game you know. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns about my content, let me know down below if there's anything you want to see. Uh, let me know. I'm more than willing to listen at the very least. And thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate each of you watching my videos. Please, uh, please subscribe if you if you're you're new here and uh, and like the video if you enjoyed it. But anyways, I hope you guys have a great day and I look forward to seeing you again next time.